The, the first lesson of the person of the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest documents in Christendom is what is called the Apostles' Creed. And in the Apostles' Creed it says, I believe in the Holy Ghost with capital letters of a person. For the church not to know his person, the Holy Spirit, to be ignorant of his mission to the world in which we live today creates an ineffectiveness, I believe, in a world ministry that we should be doing that until we come to know him better, as we should be showing you whose dispensation this is, we in certain areas will be ineffective to do the job that must be done preceding the return of our Lord and Savior from heaven. Millions of people at this moment are aware of the apparent lack of information I was on the tremendous need that only the Holy Ghost can fulfill to the church today. I have a library of several thousand volumes and I was amazed when I, thinking I had a, a full gospel library, I was amazed to discover I had less than six books on the person of the Holy Spirit. Less than six books. And immediately I said, there's a lack here. When I have volumes and volumes on gifts, volumes and volumes on the fruit of the Spirit, and so little on him. And as this thing began to move in my spirit, it came alive that you and I had to sit down together and study the person of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Yeah. There, there is a universal desire at this moment for these lessons to be taught on the person of the Holy Spirit. We believe that the knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit is like an idea whose time has come. That we at this moment are in the flow of prophecy, in the flow of what the Holy Spirit is doing in this moment to reveal the person of the Holy Spirit to the body. And we're so thankful for all of those on satellite uh, across this nation that are receiving live right now and through the television stations that are receiving also uh, that we have a, an enormous class. And we believe that if each of us tells the story, we'll get the story around that we have come to know him better and we will be teaching from night to night this truth that is burning so strong in my own spirit. I must say first that the study of the person of the Holy Spirit is one of the highest themes of human study. No truth uh, is so necessary at this moment uh, to be taught and maybe no truth uh, has suffered as much as this through persecution and misunderstanding. People are afraid of saying that the person of the Holy Ghost is a person as we're going to teach you tonight and the other nights. A real person. Uh, just as much a person as Jesus is or just as much a person as God the Father is. And we are bold to say it because we're going to move out into it believing God that even as we talk new revelation will come and that we'll all get excited about it. Can you say amen? amen. I would like for us to begin this particular session with a word of prayer. Holy Spirit, be present in this class. And as our Master, the Lord Jesus, said you would teach us all things, we are ready for you to teach us. As he said that you would guide us, we are ready. Guide us. We are ready to move into a new dimension of truth. 
And we believe a new dimension of power. So therefore, keep your hand over us. We shall stay in the full embodiment of truth as taught by the word. And that we shall move forward into dim dimensions of power and strength. And all the people said, Amen. These are studies that are dealing with deity, the highest order, and, and uh, not easy to deal with. When you start thinking you can analyze and define God the Father, you just got a big job on your hand. And when you think that you can tell the full story of the mystery of the incarnation, and that the imperial son of the most high God condescended to come here to this earth and to save us. You have a big order on your hands. And maybe a bigger one when you say, I will now define the person of the Holy Ghost and say that when you get to heaven, you'll meet him. And that right now, as a person, you can come to know him in a much greater way. Well, that we have to leave there. We're just going to say that we are dealing with an identity of deity and ask God to help us. We should discuss the person of the Holy Spirit as God with all of his attributes of personality. It's going to be really exciting. Hallelujah. Of all the idiosyncrasies of his temperaments and, and his nature, that he deals with human beings from. That will be exciting. And we will be talking and describing and emphasizing truth on a divine level, asking God. I don't know what might happen. I'm ready for it to happen. <laughs> I'm ready for it to happen. We believe that this is a truth whose time has come, and we're ready for it from him, not from a human, but from him. We shall observe that the Holy Spirit is not an abstract dogma of mysticism. And that's where it has been relegated to maybe for a long time. The Holy Spirit is a person, as a third one in the Godhead, and that we are not dealing with an abstract dogma of any kind. We're not dealing with an impersonal force. There are impersonal forces in the universe. The Holy Spirit is not identified in that way. We are identifying the Holy Ghost with personality. And I'm so eager to get to it until I might jump my points if you don't hold me back. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not a quality of divine essence. Some people would like to designate him as that. That he is a quality of divine essence. We will remove that far from us as we delve into these truths. Because we personally believe that the Bible teaches. And we personally feel that in these studies on the person of the Holy Spirit. That they are absolutely imperative to this generation to understand who he is, what he is, and what he will do for you. Possibly, one of the greatest needs of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today is to understand and possess a personal confrontation. Now, that's more than a doctrine. A, a personal confrontation with the person known as the third person of the Trinity. If you have one, I want to know about it. If you find yourself confronted with the, the deity of the Holy Ghost and, and something happens within you, through you, for you, I want you to communicate it because we are communicators here. Yeah. We, are, we are here for communication. And, and so communicate it because we are open for this remarkable moment just before Jesus comes back to earth again. Your point number one on page six says that the sole source of our information, I must begin with that, of course. We will not go into any superstitious literature emanating from oriental cults or 
anything of that nature to seek to know anything about spirit. The Bible is and shall be the sole source of information on the third person of the Holy Trinity. We believe that the Bible is a sufficient source of knowledge. So we're going to keep in the lids of the Holy Scripture in order to understand the, the tremendous, the tremendous reaching out and reaching in to God for knowledge relative to the person of the Holy Ghost. I feel that God the Father and that God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that they are speaking to my spirit. And I say this so sincerely and so deeply. And that we have been many months putting their teaching syllabus together and, and, and never cease. I mean, we haven't, we don't feel we have completed anything. We feel like we are reaching for divine truth and that's the reason we want you to feel the same way. You will not in this class receive the final, the final word, but you will become so hungry for truth. In fact, they tell me that a good education is a desire within you to learn. If they can ever get that in you, then you are now educated. Many people have no desire to learn. There are Christians that have no desire to learn. They, they like little parrots. They just want to hear somebody say something and they'll chirp it back. We don't want you to be that way. We want you to be investigators. We want you to be penetrators. We want you to reach into the very depths of God's truth and there find satisfaction. And I won't ever have satisfaction until I know more about the person of the Holy Spirit and what he has to do in our lives as of today. And all the people said, I feel that God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to my spirit to better know the director of the present dispensation of grace, not to just talk about him. I, I'm afraid I have done that too long. But to know him. So now, now, now what we're going to really hold firm with you in this is this, that we are not just solely wanting to teach you a doctrine. I want you to know him. My, my thirst to know him is so great until every day and every night now this thing is burning in my spirit. And that's the reason why I believe that God in these classes will give us a fresh revelation and we are ready for it. This is especially important, we believe, in this final dispensation of man's rule on planet earth. Man's rule began with the dispensation of innocence in the Garden of Eden. It will terminate with this present dispensation of grace. That makes this the second greatest dispensation in all of mankind's history. We are living in the second greatest dispensation. It might be the first dispensation was the greatest because it was the dispensation of innocence. We don't even know how long it was in, in force. We don't, all we know that one day it terminated with sin. But now we are in the final dispensation, not from God's side, but from man's, man's legal rule on the face of this earth in the dispensation of grace. Because in your last paragraph at the bottom of your page six, the next generation, the next dispensation coming after this, which is ordained of God, is called the dispensation of the kingdom age, which will have the Lord Jesus Christ as its lawgiver, its administrator, its king. That kingdom dispensation over, over which the only begotten son Sheru personally will last for 1,000 years and is referred to as the millennium dispensation. That's the next one coming up. It does not have a factor in it of man ruling. So the only dispensations in which man has ruled have been these six and we are now in the finality of the sixth one. I believe that really you could divide all dispensations into three. You can have the dispensation of the Father that began with the creating of Adam and Eve in that dispensation of innocence. 
And it continued through the dispensation of law, which would be for 4,000 years. Then at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, you had the dispensation of the Son, the Son of God. He was the leading one. Uh, he was the one that was in front. He was the one that divine truth was focused upon. And we have there the dispensation of the Son of God. When he returned to heaven and the angels said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus will come back. And he shall come back as you have seen him go away. And standing right there, a few seconds before, the Lord Jesus said, Now, you go into Jerusalem there and you tarry for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 8 of Acts 1, he says, And you shall receive power. After this one, the Holy Spirit himself has come upon you. And then in the upper room, you have the incubator of the Christian church. And you entered and were ushered into the dispensation of him, the Holy Ghost. He is just as real as the second dispensation or as the first dispensation. And I'm afraid that, that in our times, I don't know how it was hundreds of years ago, but in our times, uh, we have not given, given appreciation and we have not given teaching to the fact of his personality. Who is he? What kind of person is he? And what can he do for our lives today? I am an open candidate. Yeah. And to know more and more of what he can do. And I'm glad that you and I are, are the children of the third dispensation. That we are the children of the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. And maybe we know more about the first dispensation of the Father or the second of the Son than we do about our own dispensation in which we live. And it becomes more crucial and critical as we come to the termination point of his dispensation. I believe he wants to finish it with great glory, great power, great authority, and I want to be in there with him. Amen. Glory be to God forever. <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to be great. The Holy Spirit, with all the intricate abilities of his personality, I wish to be, uh, have it revealed to me how I can not only know them, but use them. It might be that the gifts will never be properly used, called the gifts of the Spirit, until we know him in a greater way. It, it, it might be that we cannot see the fruit of the Spirit in the church. When in a lot of places, we're not seeing the fruit of the Spirit. That maybe we have not seen the fruit of the Spirit because we don't know the giver well enough. Amen. And so it is time for us to say, God, we're going to penetrate. Uh, we're going to pray. Yes. We're going to seek you about it. Yes, and if we get something good, we're going to share it with Brother Samra. We promise. Yes. 